It's time for Clubhouse Chatter live from Baseballism in downtown Portland. Here are the guys, Tony Torcato and Norm Ordez. Man, you notice he says your name first. You get like Ryan, first well, billing. This is my show, well, our show. And you get first billing. What kind of crap is that? Brian needs his back. You know what? Right with the check. I'm okay with that. <laughs> I'm okay with that. Hey, it's Norm and uh, Tony. We got Brian, and we are live up here at Baseballisms in 24th and Quimby. And hey, um, great, great store. First yeah, time here. Very it's nice. pretty cool. And so everything for the baseball fan. Um, you know, make sure you guys come check it out. And so we're here because of Jack today. So we brought Jack up here to uh, talk a little baseball and hang out with some some of the guys. Yeah. And man, you know, we've got we've got Frank Peters here from the old Portland Mavericks. We've got Joe Patterson, Oregon State fame, and Arizona Diamondbacks. Chris Hadland, Linfield guy, Division three pitcher and player of the year. Um, Kellen Robb, former Diamondback or in the organization. Uh, we got Nelly. We got Nelly over here from Radio Fame and. Uh, you know, it's exciting to get old Nelly out and uh, and um, and Jack and his mom Where's and his Jack brother are here. Absolutely. And so Kellen opened up the, the store for us today and um, we are here and we're going to celebrate Jack today. So what it's we're going to what we're going to do is we're going to rotate um, people in and out. So Brian will mm -hmm. Brian will set us up here. And so who do we want first? You pick, man. Anybody. Let's go with Nelly. Nelly. Let's go with Nelly first. Okay. Let's bring on Nelson here. And Nelson, um, you're up, bud. Yep. And so right here. Right here. And so we'll switch out Tony. Tony, we'll catch up with you a little bit later. And we got Nelson coming up. Formerly Nelson, the intern. He's dropped the intern title. Nelly. No, I was never actually an intern. I know you weren't. <laughs> and so you, man. I'm doing good. And so for those of you, I mean Nelson, Portland Radio. Z100, yeah. Rosie, Buzz, the Buzz. Yeah, I started, uh, um, my radio career began by just calling radio stations and trying to be funny. I mean, I was always a class clown. And so I started, uh, the first one was Z100. I started calling them when they were talking about something. I'd call in, say something, do something. When I heard them laugh, I hung up. Mission accomplished. <laughs> and then I would run back to my radio and, and listen to it. And it's like, wow, they played it back. And that was just great. And then one time I called in and halfway through the laughs, the guy goes, wait a second, wait a second. Who are you? And I, uh oh, I thought, stop calling us, you little weirdo, <laughs> you know. So but they said, no, we we just really like what you do. Come on in. We'd like to meet you. And that was it. Never finished high school, never went to college, no professional training, just horsing around on the phone and it turned into a job then a career and so nelly is actually from mcminnville yeah uh, grew uh, up McMinnville. in mcminnville you got a lot of the linfield guys yeah I, I just like a lot of kids in mcminnville i must have stolen from there five six seven times <laughs> 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 no linfield is a great school and it I, is uh, i used to live right um just right across over on um uh, right near Booth Bend Road. Okay. Right there in the big practice yep. fields out in Linfield. We used to go over and watch the guys practice football. So all the voices inside your head. Yes. Which do you, one? Do you, do you have a favorite? Well, one of my, one of my favorites is Homer Simpson because I like to think I'm kind of a thinner version of <laughs> Homer. <laughs> right. You know, because I'm kind of a numbskull and I always get myself in trouble. But all the Simpsons, I love the Simpsons characters. Like Homer Simpson. Oh, I'm so glad to be here on baseball day. That means there's going to be free hot dogs, right? <laughs> uh, Simpson, let's go have us a hot dog. Hey, Homer, what do you say we have a beer when we're done with those hot dogs? So, I love the Simpsons. Homer's my favorite, though. What do you got going on now? You're starting you're starting up a podcast. Yeah, there is a really, really uh, great lady that I know. <clears throat> Excuse me, I've been fighting a cold all week. She uh, owns a media company. They do various things. And so under the umbrella of that, Kuko Media, we are starting the Nelson Show. And just trying to get all of our infrastructure done right now, building the website, getting the database, everything. We're recording some podcasts nice. now. So when we hit the ground, we've got a ton to go with. And, man, I, I just, I've just i been very blessed to hook up with a couple of really smart, talented people, uh, Melissa and another gal named Sarah, who know how to do everything that I don't. Mm -hmm. And I'm the funny one. Yes. That's what I do. So. <laughs> and so, you know, Nelly, we've been, God, I've, I've known you for years and, and just listened to you. And 
you know, it's glad that you're you're coming on with the podcast and you, oh, you need to be, to be out here. there. And, you know, you're a funny, funny guy. And I'd be sitting home watching golf right now if I wasn't here. I'm so. glad you're here, too. <laughs> and so so once again, this is Nelson and uh, we're glad you're here and uh, go hang out with Jack and yeah. let's uh, let's bring on Joe Patterson. You so said depending on how he's doing, maybe going to uh, interview him and have, Absolutely. Uh, have him on our part, our podcast, too. That's so. pretty sweet. So let's bring on Joe here next. All right, Joe, you're up. <laughs> all right so we got joe patterson so joe's actually been on the show back in our old blog talk days with his brother sam and uh yes always yeah call yeah in, though. yeah always calling always called in yeah. and so joe <laughs> is a former oregon state beaver was on both national championship teams yes um, played with the Giants and in the Diamondbacks, and the organization was actually in the major leagues with the, the Diamondbacks. The Diamondbacks, yes. And so talk to us a little bit about that major league experience. I mean, it was short, definitely. I mean, you got, what, a year and a half? Yeah, a little about bit. About a year yeah. and a half, a little mm -hmm. over a year and a half. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that experience. Yeah, a year and 52 days, but who's counting? Hey, <laughs> you get a pension. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, it, no, it was amazing. It was – it's unbelievable, everything you could ever – dream about um, I remember being told and that was that I was going to make the club and you know that's just you know you, you, there's movies on that and it's just unbelievable feeling to have your dream come true from a little kid so it, it was it was awesome and, and that year we it was a very successful year 2011 so I ended yep. up getting to pitch in the the National League Division Championship versus the Brewers which was unbelievable unbelievable environment so yeah I've been very lucky in baseball and, and got to experience um, some neat stuff. So from, you know, from a standpoint, so I've worked with McMinnville Parks and Recreation for 22, 23 years, and Joe is actually one of our old Parks and Rec kids. And we'll have another one come on with Chris Adeline. And, you know, what do you remember your time down at Joe Dancer, you know, being a little one playing down there? Those are fun times. Oh, yeah. I love Joe Dancer. I, I actually, once I started having kids, I, I had to take the wife down to scout the, the area because uh, it had been a while since I'd been down there. Right. And they used to have a little little shack that sold nachos, and it wasn't there. And I, nope. was, I was hurting for what, what I was going to do. I'd already planned out. What we don't have that yeah, anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, no, it's it's an unbelievable place to grow up playing. Joe Dancer, you go down kind of in the I, – I don't know what you guys refer to it, but it's, you know, you're the going bowl. down into yep. the bowl. Down into the bowl. That's flooded all winter, but it's yep. perfect during the during the spring and summer. And you go, you go out there, and just the awesome manicured fields, and and all the trees that are out there. It's it's awesome, and it's a huge open space. So it's it is, a blast. It is awesome. And the thing I remember, Joe, from the Parks and Rec part was the competitive. You know, the you know, you being a competitor. I mean, you always had fun. You always had a smile on your face. I mean, all your your brothers did, and um, you know, you played the game with passion oh. and. Uh, it was fun. It was fun watching him grow up and grow into that major league pitcher and uh, watching you with the career. And so oh, thank you. Oregon State, 2-0 and this year so far. Yeah. I've and, uh, man, they're good. They are. They're really good. Yeah, I was listening to them on the radio during the lunch hours uh, the last couple of days, and I think they played today at noon. So it's, yep, yeah, Cal it's, Poly. Yeah, with the year they had last year was so amazing and oh, they fell a little short yeah you know yeah. i i think they're as good if not better i mean we could see another run like what we did last year yeah and you know the amazing thing with them is i you know you turn on the the, the broadcast or read about it and it's an it's a freshman or somebody that had an a yep. amazing outing and they just keep having them come so it's that's pretty awesome right all right well joe yeah. thank you for thank coming you. on and yeah. uh, go love on jack a little bit let's bring on chris hadland here next we'll keep the mcminnville connection going here So, Chris, Chris is another McMinnville High School product and uh, former Parks and Rec kid. And, man, I'm sorry I didn't even recognize you when you <laughs> walked up. It's Like I said, it's been, a it's been a while. It's been a while. And so Chris pitched at Linfield, was on their national championship team, um, was also the D3 player and pitcher of the year. And uh, what was your biggest – what did you take away the most from, from that season, that special season? You know, uh, obviously the camaraderie with the guys is a lot of fun, but – those guys worked hard, and we didn't lose back-to-back -back games. It was just a fun group to be around, really competitive. Um, I'm really confident they just attacked the game. Yeah. What are you doing these days? What are you doing um, now? Right now I'm working as a graphic designer up at a casino called Alene in Ridgefield, Washington. The new one, yes. Yep. How, how are things going up there? It's going well. It's been a lot of fun. Um, you know, We have fun there all the time. There's lots of cool events that go on, and 
it's been a blast. Are you still playing a little ball inside? Oh, I haven't played in a while, but, you know, once it warms up, I'll try to get out there and toss a few balls around. Nice. So now another Parks and Rec kid coming up. Yep. What memories do you have of Joe Dancer Park? And you probably had me as an umpire somewhere along the point. I did have you as an umpire when I was younger. Um, was I was I nice to you? Was I, I kind to you? You are a good umpire. <laughs> <laughs> I remember going to a couple of the one-day camps that you'd put on back then, and uh, I loved playing there. It was great to play against all my buddies. Um, and then, you know, you're going down there every day, basically, and just playing ball. It's a special place. Yeah. You know, I don't know how often that happens anymore with how baseball's going, but playing against your friends and playing with your friends is a lot of fun. And knowing who you're playing against every day is a different experience. Right. So you, um, you keep tabs on Linfield these days? You know, I try to keep tabs a little bit. Um, they've gotten off to a pretty good start. They have some good pitching this year. I think Casey Cunningham's probably one of the best guys they've had in a good long time. Absolutely. He's fun to watch. Casey kind of actually stuff. was uh, Jack's baseball buddy when okay. he threw out the first pitch last weekend and awesome. I mean they couldn't have picked a better He's a player better person kid. to do it yeah. and so so hey thank you for coming on and you know go hang out with Jack and uh let's bring on hey let's bring on Josh all right and so all right thank you you're next okay so hey we're bringing on old friend here old friend josh randolph the 90 and he know it all and yeah. so man this is where clubhouse chatter all started was 90 and he know it all yeah we started doing the uh the blog talk radio with the uh, 90 and baseball talk and and then uh yeah that was a lot that was a long time ago so the story so seven years now for 90 and he know it all six That's years seven years this summer so yeah we're right about seven years so seven years ago josh josh was you know, working as an intern with the Volcanoes, and I was doing security. Yep. yep. <laughs> loosely security. <laughs> yes, yes, that's a and, very, very uh, you strong know, term. So. Working is loosely thrown around <laughs> term for the Volcanoes as well. And he approached me about doing some stuff with 980 and all because of my minor league experiences around baseball. And so I jumped on it, and it has led, you know, led to this. and um, A lot of crazy things it's led to at this point. Man, I'll tell you what. We've had some great times. Oh, my gosh. It's been I mean, I, I thought about it the other day because Kelly and I were just talking about things. And we talked about even like when Kelly and I went to the Arizona Fall League and all of a sudden there's a PA announcement about, happy birthday, Kelly. And we're like, what the heck is that? That was Norm who had called down and said, hey, it's Kelly Burns' birthday, which it wasn't even in the right time of the year. But um, we've had a lot of crazy things that we've experienced, I think, because really because – I got frustrated with a certain individual, um, and we ended up doing amazing things. I mean, we have almost 36,000 likes on Facebook. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's crazy to think of all the things we've done. I mean, you know, we've done interviews with, with Team Israel. You know, yep. I've, I've caught, you know, a lot of the guys down at the Arizona Fall League been able to talk with them. Now I, I cover a lot of the, uh, col you know, community college baseball up here in the Northwest and just been – loving it I and mean, it's just it's so much fun to walk into a stadium and just know that hey i'm just here to watch and have fun and goof off and i do it all the time so it's fun isn't it using baseball okay. as our, our tool here it is and you it know we've gone kind of a little bit different ways and um you know i still kind of associate myself with the nine inning know-it-all empire or yep. and vice versa the clubhouse yep. chatter empire Absolutely. you know we work hand in hand in a lot of cases and and um you guys are doing a great job and I got to sit down. I'm, st I'm still working on what what baseball means to me. I've been working on that for like four years now. Well, and it's funny because we have that that series of guest posts from everybody, and you know, I've written my, my written my what baseball means to me, and going through and everybody else's. And the person who started that whole thing was Kelly, and he hasn't written his yet. I know, mine keeps changing. I, I yeah, because I, I wrote mine. Really, I was one of the first people, so I wrote mine two years ago, and then I was thinking, just a couple weeks ago, I'm like. Baseball is so different to me now. You know, Absolutely. I, I, I now have two daughters. My oldest one's playing t-ball, and Kelly and I are coaching uh, that team with, with my niece on it. And it, it just, it's so different. And my daughter, uh, what was it, two weeks ago, it was nice outside, and she's like, let's go hit some balls. And I'm like, w what? What? I mean, she's <laughs> never asked me to do that. And we went out, and she just she hit me in the face a couple times. So I'm very proud of her. But it was just, it's so different now to look. Because it used Baseball was really about how my connection with my dad and how that developed, but now it's a lot more of how my daughters and I are starting to connect 
and granted, my youngest one's only one, but my oldest, you know, she's almost six, and, you know, when I talk <laughs> about going to get autographs, going to watch a game, you know, she decides whether she wants to go on her own, and if she wants to, she's there with me, so. So the big thing, you know, for me, what baseball means to me is, you know, the biggest thing is family, mm -hmm. and that's you kind of, you know, hit on that point a little bit, you know, as we're here for Jack, yeah. and, you know, it's, you know, baseball family is just, it's all one big family. It and is. And, it is. you know, it's all about those connections in which, you know, sometimes it just blows my mind on what I know and who I know. And, you know, it just cracks me up. I well, just. And, and that's even like the little things. Like I was, um, someone was talking to me a couple of weeks ago and they're about, you know, well, they wanted to connect with people and talk with individuals. And they're like, so who do you know? And I was like, well, I don't know anyone really in baseball. And I started thinking, I was like, wait a second. Yeah, I do know people. I, I know the. The Mariners minor league coach of the year from last year. I I got the chance to, you know, interact with him because his dad does all of our screen printing for us. And uh, Brent Lilbridge, I, I got a chance to yep. interact with him quite a bit. And I, I started thinking through all the people who I've interacted with and people who um, I walk into the stadium. They look at me and say, "Hey, Josh, how you doing?" It just I know a lot of people now, and it's all because of a goofy website that <laughs> is so much fun. So Josh hit on. Um, a person who he is frustrated with, and I just want to—I <laughs> just want to say—it is 98 degrees 98 in here today. Degrees. It is very hot and, in here uh, right now. And you know, if you know, you guys want to hear the story, you know, shoot me a message, and I'll be glad to tell you the story. And it still cracks me up to this day. And, and if you go through my past websites or my past articles of how 98 Know It All came together, you could really piece it together. Um, I don't list names, but I do mention 98 degrees a few times. Yep. And, and it's funny because, you know. For some reason, every couple months, that name pops up again, and I'm like, oh, yeah. Do you remember how that name got started? I do. I do. I do. <laughs> it was uh, the boy band name. Yes. And, and so so what happened was is this guy started taking over social media for the uh, volcanoes, yep. and he wanted to give everybody nicknames, which you can't just give people nicknames. Yeah. they got to be earned. Their names got to be and earned. So, so right. I threw out with the last name that he had that, you know, I'm going to call him 98 Degrees, and the rest is history. He got mad at me. and He banned us both. Banned from us from both from media. Yep, yep. Yeah. Which I thought was interesting because I was a team photographer, but I was banned from so connecting with them on social media. Right. So, um, yeah, that was a lot of fun. It w I will say this. Josh Hauser, who was a part of that team as well, um, kept unblocking me. Yes. Which made it even more enjoyable because I would then do something to get blocked again. Yeah. And then Josh would unblock me. So, Josh, if you're watching this, I owe you a big thanks because that was so much fun. So, so. where can we find 98 Know It All? So, once again, 98 Know It All .com is our main website. Um, but we also got the Facebook page. So, if you just search the number 9, 98 Know It All, um, you'll find our main Facebook page. Once again, we got like 36,000 people. And then, um, you know, like you with, with Clubhouse Chatter, we're starting to do a little more interviews um, a lot more stuff. So even on YouTube, we've got some stuff there. Yep. So um, just try to interact and promote kids that love baseball. And just like you said, it's family. It's just having fun. All right. Well, Josh, thanks for coming out. Go love on um, Jack there. And we're going to bring on Kellen here next. And so Kellen, Big Kell, will be making his way over here. So our next guest is, is Big Kellen. Man. We go back a long, we go back a ways. Yeah, yeah, we do. You, know, you know, 2006 Lancaster, I and I'll know. tell you what. 12 years now. God, that was a hole. I know. That was a hole. You know, we were chatting about that team, you know, how, you know, we weren't very good, but we had a lot of talent. You know, well, it's funny thing is the, the 2005 team from South Bend the year before, we'd won the league championship. We, right. We had the second most wins in minor league baseball. I mean, we went, we murdered people that year. And so I think that that 2006 team, with the addition of a few other guys that they were bringing in that, you know, went on to play in the majors as well, as far as, like, the pitching staff and everything was concerned, I think they really felt that that team was going to be a kind of, of a continuation of that. And it just, it, you know, was nothing like it. No, it, you know, playing in, and playing in Lancaster is different. I mean, as, as a pitcher, I mean, so the Diamondbacks had a team psychiatrist. Do you remember him coming out? Yeah, no, you know, I, I do. A couple, I mean, of, like a bunch, more than he was scheduled to. It, w I mean, as a pitcher, I think pitching in Lancaster, it's if you can survive that, you could kind of survive anything type, right. type of a situation. I mean, it's literally if you're a pitcher, they're just throwing you out there to see if you know. It's like here's some wolves, go play with them. If you survive, you know, then you you have a chance. But I mean, honestly, it, it you know, it, it, we always thought at the end of the year. We were like, okay, well, if this place never were to exist again, I think every person in this would be happy here because it's the worst p 
pitcher's park I've ever seen in my life. It, it was pretty bad. You know, that was the year that that our team set all kinds of records. Hitting. Yeah. Hitting home runs, yeah, exactly. You know, runs. Well, and, you know, yeah, you had two guys that still, I mean, in the major leagues today that are, you know, and Carlos Gonzalez and Mark, Mark Reynolds. Reynolds. And yeah. so, you know, you had those guys and, you know, and you, you had some amazing guys that could, you know, just get on base. And, I mean, it wasn't un too common that you have a 21 to 18 game. And you <laughs> just be like, hey, you know what? Hey, we, we kind of, you know, squeaked that one out there. So, you know, it was, it was pretty amazing to, to see how that team, you know, was put together. But, you know, it, it pretty amazing. I mean, the, and the funny thing was is that you had Greg Smith on that team who went on to yep. you know, pit, pitch in the, in the big leagues with uh, Colorado and the, and the Oakland, A's. Yep. But uh, he had, like, some uh, ungodly number of, like, an ERA of, like, 1.8 or something like that. And you're just like, okay, Th you know, I, apparently this guy's just – Amazing, you know. I, I thought after watching him and what the scenario was in, the, in that park, I was like, "This guy's unreal." Yeah, I remember the no hitter that he had going in Lake Elsinore. Yeah, and that's that's the game to where I was banned from the dugout for a couple of weeks because <laughs> I was in the clubhouse, and I just wanted to be a part of it, you know. And I remember coming down to the dugout and sitting down. And he lets up that base knock and breaks it up, and so, you know. But, yeah, no, you're right. I mean, you know, we had Matt Chico on that team. Who yeah. Pitched with the Nationals. Mm -hmm. um, you know, who else, man? I mean, Bonifacio, Emilio Bonifacio. Yeah, Bonifacio. I mean, obviously Cargo and Mark Reynolds. And then, you know, and you, had, you had some guys that, you know, Rusty Ryle went on to play with the yep. Diamondbacks. As Merling Vasquez pitched with the Diamondbacks as well. And so, you know, the, the team had, you know, a, a, a great mix of players that, uh, you know, everyone thought was, was going to do well. But, you know, it is what it is. Lancaster was fun. Well, kind of. I mean, <laughs> you know. You, know you, you make fun. I mean, the, the, the best part about the minor leagues in general is just the, you know, you don't make any money playing minor league baseball uh, unless you sign for a lot of money. But you don't make any when you're actually playing. And so it's kind of the, the fun about I always joke about with, uh, you know, with people that ask me about it all the time, they'll say, oh, you probably having the best fun. I was like, you know, it was good, but, you know, we had a, a you know, for example, just in Lancaster, we had a two-bedroom place. Um, we had, uh, I lived in the dining room on a blow-up mattress, and so, you know, I had no privacy, and, it, you know, it was, it was, you, know, you got by, but it was what you had to do to live with it, and, you know, and other times uh, playing with, you know, other places in Yakima or places like that, you know, living in someone's house and right. in a basement or stuff. So, you know, but I think that's the fun part about it is just the, the grind essentially of it. I mean, you're like, a, you know, it's kind of just taking your knocks as you can and having some fun doing it. Right. Well, thank you for coming down. Yeah, it means definitely. a lot. And go love on Jack a little bit. All right. And, Sounds um, good. Let's, uh, let's send in Kalen. We want, we want Kalen, the, the man back there. And so Kalen was nice enough to open up the doors for us. And um, Kalen, you know, we've talked talked quite a bit about bringing Kalen in the show. And uh, so we finally got him cornered. And so we're going to bring on Kalen here. And uh, Kalen is one of the original four with the original baseballisms back in the day. And give us a brief description of how it all started. Okay, so I'm the worst at telling the story of the group. I, I know. <laughs> um, the four of us went to the University of Oregon, and we played club baseball together. And after school, when we were finishing up, um, I'm the oldest, so I had left. The other three guys acquired a baseball camp that had been running in Eugene for a few years, actually for quite some time. Uh, basically got a list of names and some gear and the name of the camp. And so they renamed the camp Baseballism, and they uh, ran a camp for a few years, really geared towards younger kids, mm -hmm. nine, ten years old, just teaching the game the right way. And also trying to make the game fun. Uh, a big thing they had living down in Eugene was they thought the youth baseball was not as strong as it should be. And then they just thought it was, you know, being taught in a boring way. You know, put kids out there playing t-ball. Sometimes that's not the answer. And you see why right. kids go play soccer where they can run around all the time. So they ran a very successful camp for a few years and then eventually had to get jobs that really paid. And so uh, shut down baseballism, the baseball camp. And uh, a few years later, people were interested in the, the camp t-shirts with the baseballism logo. Yep. and did a small run and then did a Kickstarter campaign. It kind of just took off from there. So here we are today. You are in the next 18 months, you're going to open up four new stores. You've got San Francisco, Chicago, Boston, and Arlington. 
do you ever think it would blow up to what it is today? You know, no, uh, but I don't know. I think we're just kind of always taking it day by day. Um, and, uh, yeah, definitely bigger than we would have imagined. But you know, my partners, are, we have a great collection of people who have been successful in their own field. So um, we, we had a nice foundation to build upon. But definitely, you know, gotten lucky, too. Like, yeah. um, if you, uh, anybody who denies that there's some luck in, in, uh, or that they created their own luck, they're kind of full of it. And so we got – bring on Jonathan here. Let Jonathan talk a little bit. Hey, thank you for opening up the doors, and thank you for the partnership. And uh, it's been fun. It's been a fun ride. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm going to gig up on you now. I'm doing good. All right. So we're going to bring on Jonathan here, one of the uh, the original four guys from, you know, from, from it all starting. Man, about time you showed up. I know. I'm sorry I missed the first one of these. That's all right. That's all right. You're busy. God, you guys are busy. I know. I'm sure Galen, Galen gave you a rundown of everything that's going he, on. Four new stores coming up. Arlington, yeah. Chicago, Boston, San Francisco. It's it's intense. You it know, really is. so from where you guys first started, did you ever think that it would blow up to this? No. I mean, I honestly, I, I look back and I remember, I remember the email that Travis sent me. This was five and a half, six years ago. He, he wrote an email and he said, hey, I got this great idea. Who wants to join me? I think if we do this right, there might be some free T-shirts in it for us. <laughs> and I and I responded. I said, you know what? That sounds like a great idea. Let's go for it. And it just it's just been exponential ever since then. It's been fun watching you guys grow. It's it's been you know not only I mean these guys are great guys from the old Oregon club baseball and uh, days and you know my connection. I mean not only you know sponsoring the show Skylar Borman. You know who we worked with, oh, and yeah. Skyler also played on that yeah. team. And yeah. Skyler, we'd like to say hi. He, I'm, he's watching today, and uh, so I haven't seen Skyler for a long time. It's yeah. been a while. Yeah, no, so, deep. what out of everything you guys have, yeah. shirts, hats, wise, what yeah. is your favorite shirt, and what is your favorite hat? Oh man, okay. Um, that's, that's a tough a, one. That's a tough one. Uh, I I gotta tell you, uh, my favorite hat that we that we've done is uh, is the classic flagman cap. Mm -hmm. and, and I think, here's why I would say that, obviously there's been amazing designs that we've had and you know some really creative stuff. When I saw for the first time someone wearing just our logo on, the, on their hat and it was someone we didn't know, it was it was like nothing else because it would mean they connected to a, a logo individually without there being a clever design behind it or anything. It was just our design. It was just our, our, our mark. And that just resonated with me. That that's when I really knew that something was going on. It was when I saw someone wearing it, and I just it was, we call it being in the wild. So that hat, I think that classic flag, right. heritage hat, was my favorite. And then shirt design, you know, it's really hard to beat six four three two. Yes. Um, it's really really hard to beat the one. The shirt that I like wearing the most probably is the three up three down shirt. I think design wise, I really like the way it looks. I think it's a good graphic, and right. it, it, it fits nicely on on the body. So. I'd probably go with those two. I'm going to go with shirt-wise the 42. Yeah. The Jackie Robinson oh, tee. Yeah. You know, and just the significance of it, and everybody knows what 42 is for the most part. Yeah. Um, and the hat, you know, yeah, you guys had one that you guys didn't release, but it was kind of like the old Montreal Expos one with the flag man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that is my field hat now, and it's so dirty. It, but I, I mean, that. that is like my favorite hat. Yeah. I've got six seven different hats now those are great colorway I, I agree with you. that's a great hat um, and, it's a really really good one and so it's like red and black got the blue bill and with the white with the blue flag man yeah. and it's yeah it's a beautiful hat yeah and i want to go back to that 42 shirt I, I agree with you you know i think um the significance of that that 42 shirt right so anyone could put a 42 on a shirt but when travis's idea when he took the declaration of independence and he superimposed it into the into the the graphic into the lettering behind it it was such a subtle change to that that made it so powerful, and that's what people really resonated with that one. And I think he just took it to a totally new level um, with that shirt. That was one of our first, right when we started really growing, that was one of the shirts I think that helped us get there. Right. So if you were yeah. playing today, yeah. what would your walk-up song be? Oh, my goodness. That's a really great question. You know what? So I, I still do play in a men's league. Um, right. It's, it's not really, it's, you know, it's nothing huge, but... Um, I still, I still love playing, and I think about the walk-up song occasionally. It's really, 
It's a tough one. Uh, let me think about. Let me does think it does it change? I mean, for me, it changes. Yeah, I, I think and that's so what it is. As it, I get it changes. Older, I'm I, like, I, oh I, man, I, I hear an old throwback song, and I'm like, oh, I like that. That'd be my walk up song. Then it'd be something different. Yeah, no, totally. I think yeah, you ask someone in high school versus college versus what, and I get older, and now you know I'm getting older now. It's like I, I think that song totally changes. Yeah. Well, we appreciate you yeah. coming out and opening up your store. Thank you. So Thank much, you. Really and let's it. get Frank, Frank the Flake up here. So we'll get Frank the Flake coming up here, and we'll talk some Portland Mavericks and baseball and whatever Frank talks about. Nickelball, we'll ask him about Nickelball. And so Frank has been on the show many times now. He's, I, you know, at least one of my favorites. And uh, we've gotten to know a little bit, of, you know, Frank a little bit here over the last couple of years. Frank, how's it going? It's going good. Yeah, it's, uh, it's nice to be able to do something like this and, and uh, hang around younger ball players. And, you know, they They're pretty are, cool guys, aren't yeah, they? They're, yeah, they're, yeah. It's kind of magical. I mean, uh, baseball, baseball players, whether you play it in Little League or whether you play it in the Major Leagues, it's pretty much the same game. Yep. So uh, when you uh, hang around ball players whether they're high school or major league, it's it's still the same. Yep, absolutely. Yep. So Portland, Portland Mavericks. So we always got to talk about the Portland Mavericks. I, I'll, I'll still tell you this every time I see you. I, I got screwed as a baseball fan because I did not get to witness any of the Portland Mavericks magic. And um, Battered Bastards of Baseball, if you haven't seen it, it's a baseball fan must. You have to see it. It's on Netflix. And... Um, where are we at with the movie? Well, the, the Netflix has uh, has uh, declared it one of the five best documentaries ever made. Nice. And it's got a, a 100% rating from uh, Rotten Tomatoes, and it's uh, considered now a sports classic. So uh, uh, Portland's on the map, and uh, and the uh, Mavericks are timeless. So. Uh, they really are. Yeah. Currently, they're working on a on a major mi uh, movie with uh, Kurt going to play Bing, play the father. And uh, from what I understand, it's going to be an R-rated, which uh, R or X, right? Right, right. And it's going to be a, um, a coming-of-age movie through the eyes of uh, uh, Todd Fields, who was a 13-year-old bat boy at the time, in which he says uh, changed his life for uh, for the better, I might add. Yeah. So uh, they're in process, and who knows how long it takes to make a movie. Right. Yeah. So, but it's coming. Uh, yep. Yeah. And uh, uh, I, I, I don't think they'll do a little thing because Kurt's certainly not going to uh, not do something in honor of his uh, father, you know, because Bing was real special. So Nickelball, how's it going with the Nickelball? Well, oh, pretty good. We have a, we've got a gambling version now. Oh, you do? Nice. <laughs> And we have it currently on sale at Guardian Games. And uh, uh, it's been a lot of fun. I was able to give uh, uh, the Maverick version to uh, Jack. Jack, And he, uh, uh, I taught his, uh, his brother how to play it. And his, uh, his mother is. Uh, so they'll have something to uh, enjoy when they watch Battered Bastards. And then uh, they can watch the Maverick version of Nickelball. So, uh, nice. So have you, have you gone over and talked to Jack at all yet? Yes. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. And so... It's uh, well, it's it is what it is, you know, and it is, it is, and, and um, so you've got to uh, take it one day at a time, and uh, and uh, appreciate everything that you have. Yep, uh, Jack Jack is a, is a huge baseball fan, and so that's why we're here today. You know, we're showing Jack some love, and um, you know, that was one of the things he wanted. He you know he wants to be around baseball, and so you know, what better way to bring some of the older guys, not necessarily old. But older guys, you know, in, you know, I mean, you've got playing experience and, um, man, it's, it's fun. And this is, this is what baseball is all about. It's, we're yep. a family. We're a big family. Yeah, and you know, uh, on the field, you know, when, when you look at, uh, uh, let's say a dugout, there's, uh, there are always, there's, there's, we had a bat girl for the Mavericks. Mm -hmm. And there's uh, always, uh, there's always a mixture of youth and age and, um, uh, I remember uh, when I played for the Portland Beavers, the guy named uh, Jimmy Reese was our coach. Yeah. And he was quite old, and he had roomed with Babe Ruth. I remember Jimmy. He was with the Angels when I was living in yep. Palm Springs. I remember yep. he was like 89 then. Yep. I says, Jimmy, I says, 
what's it like to room with Babe Ruth? <laughs> you know what he said? What did he say? It's like rooming with a suitcase. He's never there. <laughs> oh, so we got we got Frank Peters with us, Portland Mavericks. Say, give us give us uh, an old Portland Mavericks story that we haven't heard. Okay, I was explaining to um, the coach for the um, Hillsboro Hops one time about some of the things you could do as a manager without bothering to ask uh, anybody any authority. Mm -hmm. And I told him this story, what I did, and when he thought about it, and I said, could, how would you feel about it if you did this? And he had to go sit down. And what I did is I took uh, nine players, I put the rest in the stands, I bought them all beer, and of the nine players, each player played a different position and we beat the Walla Walla Padres five to two. So all nine players played all nine different positions. Do you it, remember what year that was? 1974, I think. So. And it's never been done in the history of baseball. Yeah, he was. Get, get Torcado. Torcado's Tony's dad. Was, right. He was, Dale was, he was playing there, on the yeah, Padres. We, we were talking about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so I mean, how crazy is that? Yeah. Well, it's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they, they still, every once in a while, it pops up in the paper as, uh, uh, I think the scorekeeper had to use uh, 12 pages in his scorebook. Oh, how to, funny. To get it all in. All right. Well, thanks for coming out. Go love on Jack. And we're going to bring in one more person before we're done. I want you, yes. And so we're going to bring on somebody to represent Kelly. And so sh she's kind of... Um, I, she's got a, like a startled look on her face, but we're going to bring on Kelly's oldest and to sit in with us and in behalf of her dad and chat a little bit. And so we're going to introduce you to her. Frank, thank you for stopping in and, and go love on Jack a little bit. And so, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So we'll do a quick, quick selfie here with, uh, all right, ready? Perfect. All right. All right. So we're going to bring on Kelly's oldest. So this is a little bit of a surprise. I was going to cut it off at um, at Frank, but we're going to bring on. And so now you're going to have to tell me your name. I, 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 I see all the pictures online. Gracie. Gracie. And so this is Kelly Burns' oldest. And Kelly is in with us with 90 Know It All and has done some shows and stuff like that. So your dad is, where's your dad, by the way? Florida. He's in Florida. So he's with his dad enjoying some spring training. So I'm not sorry for dragging you out. And so I'm not doing this to embarrass you. But um, what do you think? Have you have you introduced yourself to all these guys yet? Not yet. Not yet? Make sure you make sure you work your way around the room and, and introduce yourself. And so Gracie, you are an eighth grader now? Yes. And you play some softball. Mm -hmm. And so what positions do you play? I play catcher, and I'm going to start trying to play first. And catcher is your favorite. Mm -hmm. And so have you started your, your workouts for this upcoming season? Mm -hmm. And when do you guys play your first tournament? Mm, like second weekend of March. What is your favorite thing about playing, playing softball? I've, like, grown up watching and playing baseball and softball, so, like, I just fell in love with games. It's, she's pretty good, folks. She's, she's pretty good. And so her – her younger sisters who are here as well, they, they play as well. And so what is so far in your young softball playing career, what is the biggest thing that you've taken away from it? Is it, is it you know, learning, you know, about the work ethic and working hard? Is it your relationship with your teammates? Like, I've made a lot of friends, and I just love the game. Do you have a favorite baseball team? And that is? Dodgers. The, Do the Dodgers, oh, come on. I thought it was the Mariners. No. That's all right. Dodgers need some love, too. And so, hey, once again, Gracie Burns, thank you for coming on. And uh, sorry to put you on the spot. Actually, I'm not. And so we'd like to say hi to her dad. Um, I'm sure he'll see this. And uh, you want to say hi to your dad? Hi, Dad. All right. All right, thanks for coming on. And so I'm going to bring on Brian here real quick. And so we're going to bring on Brian, and we're going to wrap it up. And... Uh, we're going to hang out with Jack and talk some baseball. And, uh, you know, we got, you know, quite the crew here. And so. You want Tony, huh? No, I don't want Tony. I want you. So what do you think? Have you gotten to talk to everybody? I have. I have. But, you know, Tony's more exciting than me. Come on now. 
No, I don't know about that. I, think so. I don't know. He was actually so. Brian was actually crying when it was snowing, crying about you know driving in the snow. He yeah, hates it. Yeah, we don't have to talk about and that. And so it snows terrible. It's not yep. snowing now though. So no, it's not it's snowing now. Good. So hey, you got anything to say? No, it's been cool. It's been cool. It's been fun. You know, I think uh, Jack got to be around some baseball guys, and uh, it's cool that all these guys came out here and uh, you know just to show the support and love for Jack, and uh, it's fun to do, fun to see, and uh, yeah. Hopefully uh, we do it uh, more often for him. I think so. All right, Brian, let's wrap this up and uh, let's do it. Yeah. And so we are sponsored by, of course, Baseballism. Baseballism. Baseballism dot com. You know, opening up their beautiful, uh, you know, spot here, based by pros, Mitch Canham, up there in Washington. MDM Designs up there in uh, here in Oregon does their shirts for us. Clubhouse Chatter shirts and. Northwest Independent Baseball League. Mm -hmm. And so they're getting ready to start their spring season. So make sure you check out nwibl.com or is it .org? .org. .org. And so I'm Norm. That's Brian. we got Tony here. We Thanks, are here guys. for Jack today. Jack is a little tired, so he didn't really want to come on and talk to us, which is cool. And so, Mom, you want to come in and say hi? No? No. All right. Okay, so we'll go will. ahead. And she will. She okay. Will. She all right. All right. We'll bring on Mom here. Just put them on. Oh, <laughs> Take off the glasses. There you go. Okay. What's going on? Hi, how are you? What do you think? This is great. I love it. Isn't this fun? Yeah, this is really cool. The turnout's great. And I know fun. Jack's a little tired, but he's having a good time. I, I, I sure hope so. And yeah. so um, we've got a fun run coming up. Yes. And what can you tell us about that fun run? Um, so it's going to be in Salem at the Riverfront Park, I believe, by the carousel on yep. March 10th. Okay. And um, it's just going to be super casual, and we hope everybody can come down, and there's going to be some T-shirts and some bracelets, and we're just going to have a good time. It's free. Donations free are donations accepted. Are and donations uh, are accepted. And what time is it going to start? Nine? Nine. Yeah. And so I know we'll be there, and yes. uh, I'm not necessarily going to run, but we'll walk. Why? You know, I ain't going to run anywhere. <laughs> Do I look like Me I'm running neither. anywhere? <laughs> so um, what does this mean to you? I, I I know I you know we weren't going to talk we're not going to talk about the struggles but I just I you know you have to ask me that question. <laughs> well, cause you 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 said something to me the other day about you know appreciating what we're yes. doing and very much. You know it, it it means a lot. I mean it really does to see him. You know last weekend was yeah. amazing. Yeah, that you was You know pretty to see incredible. that smile. And and I'll tell you this, and I'll t I'll tell you again. The biggest thing that I got out of that was that he stood for the dang national anthem. Right. Yeah, he's um, you know. he's strong and he's resilient. And you know, even though that uh, our outcome is not what we want, um, he's he's fighting, and uh, it's pretty incredible to see. It it is. Yeah. It is, and he's he's an amazing young man. And where can there's there's a GoFundMe page. I do have a GoFundMe page. And where can we find that? Um, Besides I'll on GoFundMe. I'll have to probably send you a link for that. Okay, for yeah. we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and post it up yeah. on Clubhouse Pat Chatter page and stuff like that. And and you guys are going to Hawaii. We are. When are Make you guys going to go on Hawaii? We are. Um, after the fun run, we're gonna get on a plane on the 11th or 12th of uh, March and. Jack wants to go to Oahu and see Pearl Harbor. I mean, this kid is a nice. true patriot. And um, go see Pearl Harbor and maybe swim some with some dolphins and just relax. We're going to have some other family meet us there and um, just spend some time with, ta with, with family. So we're going to be doing some more of these. And okay. so we're going to be doing some more first pitches as well. You know, awesome. and that was, one of Jack's, that was one of Jack's wishes was to be around the game of baseball. Yeah, he, um, so he keeps asking when he can play on a field and be in a dugout. And I think just being in the dugout with some boys – um, just warms his heart, and that's a big deal for him since he can't be on a team. Right, and we can make that happen. And so if, if you know, you're in the baseball community and you'd like to help out, you know, get a hold of me or get a hold of Tammy. We're on mm -hmm. Facebook. Yep. Um, you know, we'd love, you know, I'd love to give the guy, this guy, the kid stars. Thank you. know, you. and we're talking about, um, you know, Giants are coming in to Seattle in mid-June. And so we're... You know, we're trying to work it out to where we can get him up there yeah. um, on the field. And, of course, you know, Buster Posey is his favorite yes. player and get him to yes. interact with that. Do you and hear so that, Buster Posey? We're coming that, for that, you. That would, that, that would mean a lot, you know, not, yes. only, not only for Jack but for all of us. Yes. And so this is an amazing young man, 14 years old, and, you know, he's touched a lot of people. Mm-hmm. 
And so, you know, thank you for sharing them with us. Thank you very and much. And so th this is Tammy Huber, and yes. uh, we're glad you guys came up. Thank you. You're welcome. It means a lot. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So I'm Norm. Brian is out there. Tony's out there. We're going we're gonna to log off here from baseballisms. Hey, if you guys are in the Portland area, come on in. There's still some, a lot of room. Um, come on and say hi to Jack. He's a pretty amazing kid. And uh, Brian, awesome. let's let's roll, and we will catch you guys later. See you guys later.